When you write songs, whether it's pop, metal, rock or some daring and mind-blowing K-pop, you need to know which chords you can use in the chosen key. The faster you can find the chords, the more fluid your songwriting will be and therefore could result in better progressions. Fortunately, there is a nice guitar neck related system we can use to accomplish a quick search for chords in a given key. And that's what you are going to nail in this crystal clear Q Jam Tracks tutorial. Let's start with the major keys. The seven notes of any major key are the roots of the chords found in that particular key. Some chords in that major key will turn up as major chords and some will turn up as minor chords. And just one little note turns out to be the root of a diminished chord. This chord is not weird, but different, like his mother always says. We'll find the major chords on the first, fourth and fifth note of a major scale, and the minor chords on the second, third and sixth note. The diminished chord has a place all the way at the end, on the seventh note. Now the root of those chords are lying in a particular way on the neck of the guitar. You could see this as triangular shapes. It's always the same, and it's visually very easy to learn this by heart. In a major scale, because that's what we're talking about right now, the roots of the major chords are placed on the neck as follows. C on the 6th string, the F is sitting right below the C on the 5th string, and you'll find a note G two flats up the neck from the F. So these are all major chords, C major, F major, G major, and we could refer to this as the major triangle. In the same major key, the root notes of the minor chords are placed on the neck in this way. E is sitting on the 5th string, diagonally underneath the tonic C. On the same 5th string and 2 frets down, you find a note D. And right above the D there's a note A. So these are all minor chords. E minor, D minor, A minor, and let's call this the minor triangle. In a major scale, the last note is the root of the diminished chord. This note is always placed one fret below the tonic like this. And so we have a B diminished chord. You can do this for every major key. Just pick a tonic note of any key. These are all major chords. These are all minor chords. The last note is the root of the diminished chord. So for A major it would be like this. Major triangle, A major, D major, and E major. The minor triangle, C sharp minor, B minor and F sharp minor. And the G sharp diminished chord is the last one. Let's look at G major. For the G major key we'll have to use some open strings but we can still use our system. The major triangle, G major, C major, D major, the minor triangle, B minor, A minor and E minor and the last one is the F-sharp diminished chord. We could make a similar system for the minor keys. The minor scale has same notes as the relative major scale, only it starts on a different note. So A minor has C major as its relative major scale. It starts, obviously, on the note A. A is the tonic. Because the notes are all the same, the type of chords are also the same. So in a minor key, we'll see a group of three minor chords, a group of three major chords, and a strange kit in town, the diminished chord. We'll find the minor chords on the first, fourth and fifth note of the minor scale. The major chords are on the third, sixth and seventh note of the minor scale. And on the second note, we'll come across the diminished chord. Just like before with the major key, the roots of the chord groups in a minor key outline a specific pattern on the neck. Let's sail into the key of A minor. So we have the A on the sixth string with an A minor chord. D just underneath the A and is the root of the D minor chord. And the root of the last minor chord is E, which is placed two frets up from the D. We can refer to this group as the minor triangle. For the major chords we will go this way. The C for the C major chord is placed 3 frets higher than the root. You'll find the F for the F major chord right beneath the C on the 5th string. 
and two frets up, you'll come across the G for the G major chord. We call this group the major triangle. The root of the diminished chord lies two frets higher from the tonic on the same string. For seven chords, there's not much difference. The chords change like this. Major becomes major seven, minor becomes minor seven, and diminished becomes half diminished. But there's one anomaly in this alleged simplicity. One of the major chords becomes a dominant seven instead of a major seven. In the major keys, the fifth chord in the scale is a dominant seven chord, also known as a plain seven chord. In minor keys, it's the seventh degree that becomes a dominant rather than a major seven. So the system has need of a slight nuance for both visual major and minor systems like this. To make things clear, the seven chords are marked with another color. So finding chords in the plain major and minor key makes life easier with this beautiful system. Now I present to you a small bonus. We're going to put this thing to work in relationship to the chord functions. So you can use it not only to create progressions, but also to create sensible progressions. An essential difference. Let's look at the C major scale and the chords in that scale. You may not have thought about this, but you have to understand that each chord in a scale or key has an harmonic function. Some chords let the music come to rest, and some chords create tension and expectation, and some chords lead logically to other chords. These are all harmonic functions. In the basic form, we are dealing with three groups. Tonic functions, which create a sense of ease and a homecoming feeling. Subdominant functions, which create uh, a lead to another chord. And dominant functions, which create a tension and want to resolve into another chord, preferably the tonic. So C, A minor and E minor belong to the tonic group, where F and D minor belong to the subdominant group, B diminished and G major belong to the dominant group. A traditional progression which works fine is 1, 2, 5 and 1. So it will be C, D minor, G, C. And it creates a home chord, a lead to the dominant. The dominant is a tangent chord that resolves to the home chord. Or, for instance, a 1, 6, 4, 5 progression, resulting in C, A minor, F and G. Creating two chords from the tonic group, a subdominant and a dominant, which resolves back to the home chord 1. In our visual system we could mark the different functions so we could see which function each chord has. By adding color-coded rings we can also see if the chord is major, minor or diminished. And for the minor keys it's the same system, only we have to relocate the root. Easy as that. Now we can choose the chords in our system based on its harmonic function and therefore we can quickly create sensible chord progressions. This concludes this QGEM tracks tutorial closing the gap between theory and practice. Have great fun and don't forget to check the other tutorials and the enhanced QGEM tracks backing tracks. You'll find them all on my QGEM tracks channel. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask them. Bye for now and see you next week.